Visit thriverealestateeducation.com For free video CE, you really can't go wrong. 24-7-365, do your CE right online. Hello everyone, Jessica Peterson here with EXP Realty and the founder of Simply Wow Agency. I am here on behalf of thriverealestateeducation.com. I am completely honored and grateful that they have me interviewing some superstars out there in real estate. And today I have Dan, the man, that's what I like to say, <laughs> um, you know, greetings, Virginia. So I just want to give you a big thank you and warm welcome, Dan, because I know the real estate agents listening today are going to learn some amazing, powerful information, no matter if you're a newbie or you're experienced, my dream and goal, and I know it's yours as well, to have that golden nugget that they can go ahead and just pick one gold nugget to excel today out there and to take into their business. So Dan, I have a long list of accolades for you. I mean, it's, it's amazing. On top of your book, I'm a big fan of your book. I want you to talk about that. You're a real estate agent, a team leader, top agent, real estate coach, just like myself. You're just an overall awesome guy. And I know you and I have said this before. There's so much similarity with us. I know someday when we do DNA, we're going to find out we're related. So, <laughs> so anyhow, and we color coordinated today. How awesome is that? So you got to have some fun. So anyhow, Dan, tell, tell us a little bit more about some of who you are and your success so our listeners can get to know who you are really quickly, and then we can dive into the meat of this. Okay. Hello, Thrive Real Estate, and hello, Jessica. My name is Dan Rushan, and I've been a real estate agent since 2007. I've carried a, a lot of different um, uh, hats throughout my journey. I've, I've owned a really rather large real estate franchise for 10 of the years I've been licensed. As Jessica mentioned, you know, do uh, coaching and, and, and I'm, I'm in the trenches selling real estate. And so, you know, my biggest intention is to be able to help other uh, real estate agents to succeed from the, uh, from the real estate sales side is to be able to help our clients to be able to achieve their goals and or solve their problems. And that, that's what I've, uh, I've focused on since 2007, um, whether that be a real estate agent or a seller or a buyer. I, I love that about you. Okay, now here's a, a saying a lot of people know I talk about quite often. So many real estate agents and even non-real estate agents, uh, especially nowadays, say that they can relate to this. Do you feel like a hamster in the wheel, coffee in hand, hair on fire, chasing the next deal? Was this you, Dan, or is this you right now, Dan? Can you relate to this? No, I can't relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's so amazing about you because majority of people out there can relate to this. So sure. that is what excites me. What do you okay. think keeps you away from, and I, I can relate to you as well, and, and, it's, and it's rare for that. So people always ask, what's your golden secret for this? So I want to hear Dan's golden secret to prevent from feeling that hamster in the wheel, the coffee in hand, the hair in fire, chase the next deal. And I always like to say squirrel moment. What, what helps Dan to avoid that? I'll give you three, three nuggets briefly. Number one is to, I keep my emotions between the lines. And so what I mean by that is that when I go to closing and I get a big paycheck, well, I'm excited for that. And I'm proud that I was able to help somebody achieve their goals or solve their problem. Yet, I'm, I'm not going to allow myself to get overly excited. Uh, because what I've noticed is that when you, if you allow yourself to get overly excited at the same sense is two days before closing and the deal falls apart and you don't get that paycheck, then uh, you, you would, um, you know, uh, inversely, conversely, you would, you would be just as disappointed as you could be excited. So I've learned that to be, you know, a little bit more moderate in regards to my emotions, top and bottom. The second thing that I would suggest that's allowed for me to, you know, have that consistency and the predictability and not be you know, hair on fire. Oh, well, besides the obvious fact of... <laughs> okay, beard, beard on fire for you, Dan. Beard, beard on fire, okay? Okay. <laughs> besides the obvious uh, would be that, uh, that I, I um, pay attention to the highest priorities, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, and I've always had the ability to be able to do that. And in real estate sales, it's the, the highest priorities are to lead generate, to convert the leads, to negotiate, to go on appointments and description role play. The challenge is, is that as a real estate agent, you have those five, which are your, your, those are like the, if you had like a lever, those are, that's the, that's the thing right there. That's going to drive the lever. The uh, challenge is, is the 837,000 other things that a real estate agent, ha, you know, has coming at them. 
And um, so that's, that's a challenge that agents have. So it's just about taking like one of those things off at a time. And I've been able to successfully do that. The third thing that I would suggest has allowed for me to stay stable and consistent and predictable has been the ability to be able to time block. And so taking those things of saying, okay, what's the highest, you know, what's going to give the highest result? I make certain that those are on my schedule so that I, no matter what, get those done. In real estate sales, typically it's going to be lead generating for sellers and buyers. Now, as you grow in your real estate sales business, that could also be lead generating for talented people to get in relationships with them. It could be, or it should be, you know, managing your money, you know, so there's other things that could be a high priority with your health. It could be exercising, could be getting on the scale once a day. I get on a scale every morning, right? And every morning I sit there and I'm like, oh, I don't want to get on that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if I don't get on that, then it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> I, I just, that's funny you mentioned that because after COVID, I finally went on a scale. That's my first time probably in five years. I don't really believe in scales, right? Yeah. If it fits, great. If not, you have a problem. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's a good way to, you know, it's a good way to be, be able to make it work. <laughs> okay. You, you said a lot of golden things there. And the number one that you said was controlling the emotions. And I have yeah. met so many agents over the years. You know, we, we care for people, right? Most of us do. And sure. when, when you care, it it's, can be difficult for those boundaries. I mean, I wrote a book on, you know, boundaries for safety for women. There's another sort of boundaries. It's the emotions getting involved. So share your secret sauce with people on how do you not get overly involved where you're losing sleep? Yeah. The, well, it goes back to, so those three things I just mentioned intertwine. Okay. Because I believe that as a real estate agent, as a professional, I have a moral obligation to my clients for me to continue to lead generate. Now, that's something that a lot of people have a, lot, a hard time to sort of connect those dots um, because what I hear other agents saying, well, no, servicing the client is the highest priority, where my philosophy is no, lead generation is the highest priority because if you're intending to service the, the client, or let me not say priority, highest focus, because if you're intending to, to service the client and that's what your, what your priority is and you're not looking to say, how do I get more business, mm -hmm. then you're going to be putting your concerns in front of theirs. So to be able to put them on a pedestal, to be able to exceed their expectations, to be able to service them the way that they deserve, which I agree with, that is what you should do with a, with a client. You should, you should more than serve the client, okay, for their needs and their wants, et cetera, Yet, which would mean that you're going to be lead generating so that you have, so you know, they say, okay, if for some reason we, this deal blows up, I'm still good because I'm not worried about paying my bills. Okay, so it starts there, which allows for me to be able to then focus on the, you know, the, the, the clients 100%, and then taking that time block, as I mentioned as well, which would be the lead generation. So those three things sort of intertwine, and that allows for me to, to, to manage my emotions. Mm, that's very good insight. So again, a couple of gold nuggets, no surprise from Dan here, you know, Dan's the man. <laughs> A couple of things you said. One that really stood out to me, I love how you made it different. And I just coached this this week. It's so fascinating how there's a difference between priority and focus because people sure. say, oh, this is my priority. What you focus on really shows your priority. Absolutely. Yeah. What you focus on expands, whether that be your weight or your, your, your ability to do lots of business, to stay consistent in your business, your relationships, you know, you, being a dad, being a mom. You know, whatever it is that, that you actually focus on, that is your priority. You're 100% right about that, Jessica. And so anybody listening, really evaluate your life or lifestyle and really see your time or how are you spending or investing it, correct? There's a difference there. How are you utilizing that time? Because that's going to really show at the end of the day what your priority is. If you say real estate's your priority and you do nothing for real estate that day, you know, then actually, something else is your priority. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bingo. I'll right? say it for you. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. So the, the other thing is I really like that you said, it's just, it's the mindset, it's perception, right? Instead of just getting so wrapped into it, you've got to step back and think, okay, I've got this plan. Here's my action. Yes. It's benefiting you at the end of the day though. It's benefiting your customer. That's what it's yeah. all about. Like today I'm getting ready to go list a penthouse luxury one. I also out there prospecting and attracting those potential buyers. Hey, 
you know, like, like you said, it's a win-win package for everyone. I really like how you say, how you say that. And also that balance, right? Are you working out, Dan? I am. You work Great. See, so how do you handle that? Cause here's what a real estate agent asked the other day. I had plans to go to the gym and then a customer called me and put me in that hair on fire or hamster wheel mode. They were panicking. How do you handle that? Well, you control your schedule. You know, so, so if I, I have my gym appointments on my schedule and I have my buyer appointments on my schedule and I have my listing appointments on my schedule and I have those on my schedule for the next five years, actually forever, like just repeats. So my job is to then fill in the blanks. Okay. So every week, my intention and I, I, on average, I go on just a little bit less than three listing appointments each week. So what I do is I have five blocks on my calendar for listing appointments. And then I have three hours each day for lead generation. And then I have five hours throughout the week for, uh, for gym time. And so during that lead generation time, my, my, my goal, right, the intention, and I sort of treat it like a game, it's just to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Okay, so then as I fill in the blanks, then if somebody is suggesting to say, well, uh, you know, can you meet me during my gym time? And I said, well, you know, I have another appointment at that time. How does three o'clock today or five o'clock tomorrow work? Would, would, which of those times would, uh, would accommodate you? Okay, so now in the rear instance, um, in fact, this happened to me yesterday where I had a gentleman, I'm in Virginia, right outside Washington, D.C., and he came up from South Carolina, was going to be in town for eight hours. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I met him at 930, which is typically a lead generation time for me. Uh, yet I knew that there was a window and it was a legitimate window so what I did was I took the appointment and I lead generated um, at one o'clock from one o'clock to two thirty. So I cut that down a little bit. I'll make up some more of that today. And then I worked out between two thirty and three thirty, and then I finished up my work day. So it's like if you have to erase it, then you have to replace it, and you have to be diligent to not just say, okay, in the rear time that I have to replace the priority with another priority, for example then um, then I have to then, you know, move the blocks around. I like that saying, if you erase it, you got to replace it. And you just gave me another aha moment. It's just like, our, I'm not a financial advisor or anything. Just like our investments, if you know that it's a prime time to move that money during this time to profit and then shift it out versus another time you had planned, it's, it's like our business. You still got to shift it around, right? You don't want to be complacent. It's just moving it in the right time. And at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you do have everything else replaced and done. So I really like that. So tell us the title of your book to everyone, and we're going to dive into what is Dan's business plan. See another thing that rhymes. So not not intended at all. So tell us about your book and tell us about your business plan to be so successful. This is Real Estate Evolution. And as I mentioned to you, I've been selling real estate since 2007. For the last 129 consecutive months, each of those months, I've successfully closed one to 15 transactions of personal sales. And so um, about, a, about a year and a half ago, and I also mentioned that I'd owned a rather large brokerage during my, uh, during my career, I sold the brokerage that I owned and met with a mentor and the mentor had asked for me to document everything that I had uh, learned throughout my experience. Mm -hmm. And I did so. And as I did so, I realized that I had a lot to say and I didn't intend to write the book. I thought I was going to be writing some eBooks. And then about three months into the journey, I realized that I was nowhere close to the finish line. And then I, I had this, Oh goodness, I'm actually writing a book. And so what I've documented in that book is, is, is a, a lot of my journey and, and I'm completely transparent. I tell you the failures or learning opportunities, what I would rather call them. I tell you about the successes. I hide nothing. I share with you the how, because a lot of other, uh, a lot of other companies will say, you know, like this big vision, but very few actually tell you here is how you can do the business. If you're a new agent, if you're a seasoned agent, here's how you can have consistency in your business. If you're a rainmaker or a top producer, here's how you can leverage and scale your business. And then the third section of the book is really just talking about uh, personal development. Okay, mm -hmm. and how can you be the very best version of yourself as possible? Because without 
having the best version of yourself as possible, then, then how are you going to ever be able to get the maximum result of you as a, as an individual? Um, so I follow up, uh, we call it a proprietary process of CPI, which is consistent and predictable income. And that is my business plan. It's, it's every single thing is documented to follow a system, whether that's advising a buyer or a seller to set expectations for the future. There's a, a, a sheet of 27 conversations I have with a buyer before I show them the first home. Well, that's very different than the, the normal agent or, not, or the um, average agent or less than average agent that will get a phone call or an inquiry on the email and say, hey, can I see 123 Main Street and then just meet them there and hope and pray that they actually show up, never mind being qualified, never mind having some sort of understanding of what their goals and intentions are. Absolutely. Okay. So tell us a sneak peek into Dan's business plan. What, what does it look like? And part of that is, you know, what does your perfect day at work look like? Okay. So I, um, I wake up early. I wake up at, uh, so I'll tell you my, my day and then I'll expand on the business plan. I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning and I know that's outrageous. So, um, <laughs> and, and when I was younger, I, I would go to sleep at 4 a.m. So I just sort of flip flop that, you know, yes, yes. I, fl- I reversed too. Yes. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, and so I typically wake up in the morning and that's my creative time. And that's the time that I allow for myself to think. So I actually have time scheduled to think I have time to schedule to read and write and uh, whatever it is, I allow for my creative process to happen. And I, I wake up early because my, my family wakes up later, you know, around seven thirty ish. And then around seven, you know, and I exercise in the morning and then around seven thirty, then I'm, I've got all that personal development stuff is, is complete and I feel ready for my day. I'll spend some time having breakfast with my family. And then at 8.30, or actually we change that time, 8.45, I start working with my marketing team and my sales organization, have a 15 minute power up with them. And then the rest of the team comes on board and we talk about 10 minutes for personal development. And then we do the, um, after the personal development, we do 10 minutes of accountability and 10 minutes of scripts and role play. So by 9.35, we're complete with that. And then the next three hours or two and a half hours, actually we're lead generating from 12 to one every single day. I'm having lunch with my daughter. From one to six, I'm either doing conversations like this or I'm going on appointments. 6 p.m., I'm done. I'm working, I'm with my family. Okay, so that's, an, that's a typical day for me. The plan that I have, is, and, and I outline this in the book, is called the, the GB Play. So Greetings Virginia is the name of my company and we're affiliated with a, with a large brokerage, but the, the, the team name is Greetings Virginia. And the GB Play is four activities, which are go on one face-to-face today. And the the definition of face-to-face is working with a buyer to get them to write an offer that gets accepted or going on a second appointment with a seller. The second thing in the GV play is to lead generate three hours a day. The definition of lead generation is to look for business that could be doing an open house, that could be making cold calls, that could be for me, it's mostly converting and follow-up. Uh, I don't have the opportunity much to lead generate to actually solicit new business. Most of what I spend my time is to looking for talented people that want to change their world and to work together that want to have a big life or um, following up on sellers or sometimes buyers. Uh, The third thing is that, that we go to one networking event a week and the definition of a networking event is one to many. So if I'm hosting, uh, if I'm doing a webinar or whatever the case may be, that would qualify as a networking event. If I'm doing an open house, that would qualify as a networking event, right? So it's just positioning myself and the the members of our team so that there can be a lot of, you know, so that you can have those um, interactions. And then the fourth thing on our our plan, our GV play, is to attend two first-time appointments every single week. Okay, so that goes back to, now I have a personal standard of three, and I almost get that. (laughs) Uh, For the team, it's two. And we have an inside sales agent department that generates 75% of our business and the agents generate 25% of the business. If that 25% is coming from referrals from the 75% that the ISAs are generating, I'm cool with that. Okay. It's, it doesn't have to come elsewhere. It could come from their sphere or whatever the case may be. Now that's a very systematic way of doing business that may be different than a new agent. Yet you could, you could, you know, have that as a vision for where you could be in the future or you can align yourself with somebody that already has something like that in play. 
So would you say most of your business comes from word of mouth or is it cold calling? What are the statistics for you? One third of my business comes from my database. Uh, one third of my business comes from cold call. And one third of my business comes from the internet. Okay. And when we look at the database, we have a systematic way to communicate with the database as well. We touch them about 86 times a year. Uh, actually, I think it's more than that now, but it's always coming from value and contribution. Because when I say that to people, they're like, oh my God, you're going to annoy people. Well, not if you're, if I gave you an ice cream cone and you liked ice cream, you're going to say, yeah, hey, thank you. Right. And if you don't like ice cream, I'll give you a new car. Right. And hopefully you like a new car. So if I'm giving <laughs> you something that you, that you would appreciate, I could give that to you every single week of the year and you'd be, you'd be cool with it. Right. So it's about following a system. We do four client appreciation events. They're big events. We, we mail to them. We call them on a quarterly basis, send them a Q&A video once a week. And those are some of the steps that are in one of the three buckets of business that we have. And then the other two buckets, you know, are divided as well. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say is, I, I always say riches and niches. So your niches yeah. is internet, right? Um, cold calling and word of mouth, not any particular first time home buyer investor or anything of that nature. So geographic. So geographic is my niche. Got it. Okay. okay, so, okay. so there is an intentional focus on a social demographic. Um, I think a better niche would be a neighborhood geographic. It's something that I've just never embraced. Uh, however, I, I definitely see the benefit of that where it's a, it's an easier business to do because my business is spread out over almost a hundred miles, 85 miles at least. And it creates a, it creates a harder um, to be able to get a, a synergy and it makes it harder to be able to, uh, to be able to get to the properties right now. I have a full-time runner that will go out there. So it's no problem. The listing I took yesterday was like 45 minutes from my house. And one of the objections from the gentleman was, well, you live too far away from here. I said, listen, I could be here with here within an hour at any given time. Someone will be here. He said, okay, get me a sign up by noon and I'll hire you. I said, no sweat. I called my runner. Or actually, I messaged with my director of operations. She called my runner. We had an, a sign on the ground a year, uh, uh, a year, an hour <laughs> after that conversation. And we're, we're fast. <laughs> and uh, an hour after that conversation, 45 minutes away, I had a sign planted in his ground. Got back on the phone with him. DocuSign got hired. Fabulous. Okay. That, that's really cool and exciting. And by the way, I do have something I'll share with you later. I know we don't have time today. There is a gentleman who's put in patents where he can very much target neighborhoods to see where sure. the gold mines are and where not the gold mines. He has a whole formula system. It's brilliant. So if you want to, if you want to definitely go ahead and know that. Okay. What, um, I know you own other businesses too. So where's your time fall into that? Uh, you know, what I learned uh, when I owned the brokerage, and at that time, I think I owned three or four businesses, but primar primarily what I was doing was I was, I, my time was spread between my sales team and my real estate brokerage. The other businesses were really leveraged out where it didn't take my time and then I could just uh, invest my money and my influence into them. And then other people, other people ran them. And so what I learned was that focusing on two main priorities is a big challenge. And both of those businesses took up a lot of my time. So today, what I do instead after we, after we sold the brokerage was to, today what I do is I focus on one high priority at a time saying, okay, I'm going to put 95% of my effort into this and I'm not going to take on anything else until this is running. And then once this, and as I build it, I'm intent, being intentional to say, I want somebody else to run this for me. And even more important than somebody else, I want the right systems to run this for me. So it goes back to just talking to you about how I approach real estate sales. Everything else is run with a system as well, because systems are, can be predictable. People, a little bit less predictable. But guess what? There's even a system to be able to hire people, okay? So, so which gives you a, you know, a higher certainty to get in relationship with the right people. So the way that I approach the other businesses today is I'm fortunate that I, they don't take my time. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one business that we're developing right now, which is the coaching arm of our business, which is taking some creative energy from me. And, but I really enjoy doing that. And that goes back to that's what I'm doing at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'll sit there, drink a cup of coffee, sit out my front porch. I'll listen to the birds chirp and I'll just sort of chill. I mean, some days I'll be out there for an hour and a half to doing nothing. Uh, some, you know, but some days I'm out there 15 minutes, I'll come back in 
And then I'm working on some creative projects like the, uh, like the coaching program, Rock Solid Coaching. I can absolutely relate to that. I go out early in the morning, listen to the birds. It's my quiet time before everybody yeah. else gets up. And I do my forest bathing. I know you and I had a conversation about yeah. that. Um, okay, what would you say is um, your big why? So I've always had a, a tangible big why throughout my life, and then I've had a larger overarching big why. So the tangible big whys for me, uh, the most recent one that I had for, for many years was to build my mother a house. And I achieved that goal about a little bit less than a year ago. Yay. And prior to that, it was, and that took me about three or four years for me to be able to, to get the money to do that and, and, and to get it that done. Prior to that, it was to buy my dream home. And that took me almost 15 years to do, to be able to get the money together to be able to do that. <laughs> and now it's to build to build my daughter a a, a swim pool, okay? Because she's nine year old nine years old right now, and when she's sixteen, I want the kids at my house, not somebody else's house. <laughs> Plus, yep. I want her to be able to enjoy it as a nine year old, right? And oh wow, yeah, we're right? so much alike. We're so much alike. Well, my daughter <laughs> is almost a sixteen, and yes, yes, this place for them to come hang out. So, yeah, I absolutely can relate. Okay, um, what if you could share one piece of advice to your younger self? On the first day of your real estate career, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself you are worthy. Oh, wow. That, that like hit my heart big time. You know, you know why that hit my heart, Dan? Because through my years of coaching, it, it's amazing to me. And I will never say their names. How many influential, powerful people in a variety of industries have always at the end of the day said that they feel that they're not worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, there's some, there's some sort of thing, and I've, I've gotten that peace within the last few years, and the peacefulness that I've gotten is to understand and realizing that my unique gift and skill is helping others, and in my early 30s, late 20s, it was like, well, what right do I have to tell somebody else uh, or give advice to somebody else in regards to how they should do things? And I don't even do that today. Instead, I ask smart questions so that I can guide them to better, better options and, and, and taking a look at what may be in your blind spots to open up your eyes, to open up your awareness so that now you can see those things that may be otherwise be stopping you. It wasn't until I got very comfortable with that within the last five, 10 years or whatever the case may be to understand and say, it's okay because just like if I was a bricklayer, that's my skill set. It's okay to embrace that skill set. It's also okay for me to embrace the skill set that I'm, um, I'm well qualified to be able to help other people to achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. That's very well said. And what I've discovered is so many people will listen to others, right, on where they should be and where their should, standards should be. And then that's what causes the unworthy. At the end of the day, what is it that you want for yourself, right? And, and, and it doesn't mean one person's better or right. No. All of us have our own dreams, our own goals, our own visions at the end of the day and just listening, go, digging into what is it you want and just going for that instead of listening to society. I remember I had a real estate agent once say, you don't want to be number one right away. I'm like, no, I've been coaching number one agents for years. <laughs> I know their lifestyle. I don't want to be known. He goes, I don't understand. I'm like, well, I just don't want, it's just not, that's not who I, that's not what I'm striving to be. Right. And so, as you know, I wrote about it in my, my book that you read after my sure. husband. Was great ICU. Book, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. After yeah. my husband is in ICU, you look at life totally differently and in, in so many different aspects. So, okay. Well, I want you, as we wrap up, first of all, I want to say thank you. My pleasure. I really appreciate this. How can people connect with you, find out more about you, find out more about your book, because I definitely want everyone here in Thrive Real Estate Education to look at ways expanding their education and and their thought process and their business and growth all from you where can they go uh, i'll tell you that before i tell you that i want to encourage you in thrive real estate education to be the very best version of you that you could possibly be and have faith in yourself and I have an understanding that. that you are worthy you are worthy of anything that you desire if you intend to get in touch with me the best way to get in touch with me is on facebook and you can do so. Uh, we have a really great uh, coaching group. It's a mastermind. It's called uh, Rock Solid Agents. So if you just put in the old uh, Facebook search, Rock Solid Agents, you'll find a group. You can apply to join there. And you can get a copy of the book either on Amazon or Audible and also at www.therealestateevolution.com. 
and you'll get a discount when you visit the website. Fabulous. Well, thank you for that. And I love your group. I've been in there. You've interviewed me on some secret ways to wow people. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Okay, Dan, as we wrap up, we got to have a little bit of fun. I just recently started putting up some cards from people. I thought, what's the best decoration to show people that care and I care and love for them back. And I love what's in the corner of your office. So can we share that with everyone? <laughs> I know you were not expecting that and I absolutely love it. It makes me happy. Maybe it's flashback to childhood. I don't know. There it is. 1981, Miss Pac-Man. Pac-Man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you to all you Thrivers out there. Have an amazing day. Hello Thrivers, Jessica Peterson here at eXp Realty, and I had the complete honor and privilege to interview Dan Rashawn over at Keller Williams. He is an absolute top achieving real estate agent who gave us so many golden nuggets on how to go ahead and succeed in life and business. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you some of my favorite highlights and moments, and I look forward to hearing from you on what your favorites were. Okay, so first of all, Dan, I want to say thank you for having a strong desire. Part of your big why out there is to go ahead and help other real estate agents succeed. That means a lot. And I also am grateful that you shared some of your big whys and congratulations, giving you high, um, high five applause here in regards to achieving those, which it took you even 15 years to get in your dream home, three years for your mom to have a home, and now you're working on a pool for your daughter. So we can't wait to go ahead and, and hear of you succeeding in that area and way. We went ahead and spoke about how real estate agents can stop that feeling of feeling like the hamster in the wheel with hair on fire, we're laughing in your case, beard on fire type situation. And I could really relate to what you said with some of this valuable golden nuggets. You mentioned there were three key areas. And the first one was about keeping your emotions in check. And you definitely expanded on that. And I'm grateful that you did throughout the interview. It's just under 30 minutes, so much information. The other part I really like, I've got my nifty notes here, is to pay attention to the highest priorities. And you spoke of five different areas of the highest priorities to be a successful real estate agent. Number one is lead generation. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit more. Conversion, um, conversion of the leads and you know, buyers and sellers that you have, negotiating, appointment setting, and role playing. So those five. And I like how you said there's 837,000 other things coming your way and how to go ahead and handle that. So thank you for that information. The third area to stop preventing like the hamster in the wheel, the hair beard on fire whole scenario is time blocking and really looking at your highest priorities. That's why I give away one of my books right now to real estate agents at createtheperfectday.com. It's all about time blocking and really making sure that those priorities are taken care of. And like you said, number one, lead gen, and I'm going to throw in there too, you know, taking care of yourself and being there with family. I know you really value that too, Dan. And I really like how you mentioned if you do replace that time. So let's say an emergency does come up with a customer and it's cutting into your workout time. It says, if you erase it, you replace it. It's really stuck with me here now. If you erase it, you replace it. I want to say thank you for that. And wow, you wowed me in awe that you get up at four o'clock every morning. So you have those three hours dedicated to you, your personal development, your writing, your reading, your working out before your family wakes up at seven. And then you guys all have breakfast together and get ready for a super awesome day. And then you broke it down into little details. So I have here how you broke it down at 845, you meet with your marketing team for 15 minutes, and then you bring in the whole team. And for 10 minutes, you guys work on, you know, having that whole meeting and then personal development for 10 minutes and then 10 minute role play. Okay. And then you're focused on lead generation. There are now hours of lead generation, 12 to one, you have lunch with your daughter. Very important to do that. I'm, I'm proud of you and happy that you do that from one to six. It's meetings and interviews like you did with me, taking care of clients out there, hustling, getting things done. Six o'clock, six o'clock, you're done. I like that how you say six, you're done. You also spoke about how being an owner of other businesses, how you're able to balance and do everything. I absolutely could relate to that as well. And I really value that information. You also shared a secret formula to success is you make it a goal to have one face-to-face -face a day. Lead generation, at least three hours a day. It could be such as cold calling, connecting with past people, open house, follow up once a week to attend a networking, whether that be virtual, in person, however it works for you. And then you said 86 times a year, you contact people. And at first I thought, oh, wow, that's a lot of contacting, right? And he said, well, if someone was out there saying, hey, Jessica, you want ice cream? You want a brand new car? Well, yeah, everybody says yes to that. So when you keep providing and giving that value and people saying, yes, they want more, it's going to work. And I know out of those 86 touches, you shared some about how it's four events for the customers. You do a video once a week that you send out to people. 
and, and you gave some really valuable information about that and picking up the phone and calling, which I'm a huge fan of on a quarterly basis. So we also spoke about niches. I have always said riches and niches and your niche was sociographic. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I look forward to hearing from everyone else here about your niches too. So um, I just wanna say at the end of the day today, I am grateful for you, Dan, for being a thriver, sharing this with other thrivers. And as you said at the end, for anyone listening, you are worthy. And I'm gonna pay it forward and end with that. You are worthy. Keep on thriving and rocking it. See y'all soon. Bye-bye. Visit Thrive Real Estate Education.com for free videos.